The Inikim Oxo is a scooter that divides the scootering world. On the one side, you have the thrill seekers who think it lacks speed and umph, and on the other side, you have those that are all about build and ride quality who think that it is superior to anything else because of these traits. On paper, the Oxo isn't slow. After all, it has a top speed of 40 miles per hour, but its sluggish throttle response and lack of urgency make the scooter feel a lot slower than it is. There are a lot of good things though, and none more so than its rubber suspension and single-sided swing arms. These two combined do a fantastic job of soaking up undulations like a hot knife cutting through butter, while the dampening keeps the wheels in contact with the ground below at all times. This, alongside the crisp, sharp hydraulic brakes, bring the scooter to a stop in just 2.7 meters, which is pretty much unheard of in the world of performance scooters. Now, whether or not the Oxo is the Rolls Royce of the scooter world will depend on if you can let its flaws slide. Welcome to Electric Scooter Insider. I'm Josh and I've been reviewing electric scooters for the last few years and it's my mission to help you choose the right scooter. So if you're here because you want the most substantial, complete and comprehensive review of the Inikim Oxo, then sit back, strap in and enjoy. In this review, we're going to cover eight key areas. Who is it best for, the pros and cons, value for money, alternatives, the design, ride quality, performance and safety, and then we'll finish with the extra features. So let's jump in. The Oxo is best suited to someone who is looking for a long range, well built and super smooth scooter. The superior build quality makes it enjoyable to ride and with the option to adjust suspension from low to high and swap out the street grade tires for the knobby off-road type, it transitions seamlessly from urban terrain to off-road tracks. However, the relatively sluggish acceleration doesn't give you quite the same exhilarating feel as other dual motor scooters and for this reason I don't recommend it to anyone who has a need for speed. Even though 40 miles per hour is quick, it's the time that it takes to get you there that will put people off. Let's start with the pros. Well, it has exceptional braking performance. The ride quality is outstanding, the scooter is very well built and it has that excellent adjustable suspension. Now what's not so good about the Inakim Oxo is that it has a non-grippy hard plastic deck and it's also sluggish off the line. Then the final point here is that its lighting is insufficient for nighttime riding. Ultimately, if you appreciate well-crafted things, the Oxo is worth your money. Similarly, if you want a scooter that provides a long, in fact, 68 miles long, luxurious, smooth sailing ride, then the rubber suspension makes it one of the most comfortable scooters that you can get. However, when we put it under scrutiny, there are some strong arguments against why it may not be the best value for money. For instance, when I compared it to similarly priced scooters, the power output of the Oxo seriously lagged behind the likes of the V-Set 10 Plus R, and in some cases, scooters that actually cost less than the Oxo outperformed it, including the V-Set 10 Plus 25.6 amp version, 20.8 amp version, and the likes of the new Wolf Warrior X Pro. Ultimately though, I love how comfortable it is to ride, but if we take a step back and look at the bigger picture of all the scooters that we have in our 100 strong database, the same smooth riding experience can be achieved from the Oxo's predecessor, the Inakim Ox. Sure, you'll have to sacrifice the dual motors for a single 800 watt motor and cut 12 miles off its maximum range, but you'll also save $600 if you're in the US or if you're in the UK, around 800 pounds. 
Now, the first alternative scooter that I have for you in this lineup is the VSET 10 Plus R. Now, you can pick this up for around $2,790 in the US and for around £2,195 in the UK. Now, this model has a top speed of 50 miles per hour, a maximum range of 74 miles. It weighs 79 pounds and it can support up to 285 pounds of rider weight. So why is it better than the OXO? Well, its top speed is 10 miles per hour faster and it also has a 48% faster acceleration rate to go along with that. And this is as a result of its larger 60 volt 1400 watt motors versus the Inokim OXO's 60 volt 1000 watt motors. It also has a longer range. You get an extra six miles to be precise. It has front and rear turn signals, a brighter headlight, superior QSS4 display, foldable handlebars for increased portability, an IP54 water resistance rating, and it can support more rider weight. So it can actually hold an extra 20 pounds of weight. Now, why is it worse than the OXO? Well, it costs a little bit more. If you're in the US, you're gonna to have to spend around an extra $191 to get your hands on it. But if you're in the UK, the price is around the same. It's also slightly heavier, so it's packing on five extra pounds. Next up, we have the VSET 10 Plus 25.6 amp model. And this is priced at $2,390 in the US. And in the UK, you can pick it up for £1,995. And just like the 10 Plus R, it has a top speed of 50 miles per hour, a weight of 79 pounds. It can support up to 285 pounds, but it has a shorter range of 66 miles. Why is it better than the OXO? Well, it's cheaper. You're going to be able to save around $209 if you're in the US or if you're in the UK, around £204. Again, it has that faster top speed, that extra 10 miles per hour and the 48% faster acceleration rate. It also has those larger 1400 watt dual motors, those front and rear turn signals, the brighter headlight, the superior QSS4 display, the foldable handlebars for increased portability. You also get that water resistance rating, which is rated at IP54. And again, it can support more rider weight. Now, why is it worse? And this just comes down to the fact that it's five pounds heavier. The third and final alternative that I have for you here is the Wolf Warrior. Now this is a very popular scooter and in the US it's priced at $2,999 and in the UK it retails for around £2,599. Now this model can hit speeds of up to 50 miles per hour, has a maximum range of 70 miles, it weighs a whopping 101 pounds but it can support up to 330 pounds of rider weight. So why is it better than the Inokim? Well, just like the VSET models that I discussed a minute ago, it has a top speed that is 10 miles per hour faster. It also has an acceleration rate that is 45% faster. It has larger 60 volt 1200 watt motors versus the OXO's 60 volt 1000 watt motors, a superior hydraulic suspension system, a brighter headlight, a superior I mini motors display, an IPX4 water resistance rating, and it can support 65 more pounds of rider weight. So why is it worse? Well, it costs more. If you're in the US, you're gonna to have to spend an extra $400 to get it, or if you're in the UK, an extra 400 pounds. And it's also 27 pounds heavier, and the folding mechanism is quite counterintuitive, which makes it incredibly difficult to lift when it's folded. The Inokim OXO is pretty much an identical scooter to its predecessor, the OX. In terms of build quality, it's as you'd expect from an Inokim scooter. The handlebars measure a wide 23.2 inches with a premium feel and thickness that provides great handling over the steering column. Just like the OX, they are sturdy, durable and wobble free. The handlebar grips are equally as good. Being the top end model, the grips are slightly different from the original Ox. Rather than being all black, they actually have a finish of orange, and while they look fancier, they are in fact the same grips. On the left hand side, there's a small bell and a red button. The red button is Inokim's version of the motor selection buttons that we see on many other dual motor models. 
Put simply, it allows you to engage either just the rear motor or both of them. On the right, there's the ergonomic thumb throttle that is lined with sensors that detect the photographic coefficients to so the light level and switch your lights on and off accordingly. Above the throttle is the familiar LCD display, but I must say compared to the next gen display on the Inokim Quick 4, it does look a little bit outdated. The OXO is Inokim through and through. Sporting the immediately recognizable orange and black colorway, its sleek paint job makes it one of the best looking scooters. Of all of the scooters that I've recommended, it is one of the most unique thanks to its cleverly designed single-sided swing arms that adorn the left side of its chassis. However, I can't help but feel the scooter has a sinister undertone with the motor sporting a design that is reminiscent of the swirling pattern on Jigsaw's cheeks. Nevertheless, everything from the slender stem, robust neck and thick deck screams reliability. And as I'll explore more in the build quality section of the review, the OXO is one of the few scooters that, well, just flows. Because each component fits seamlessly with the next, there's no misalignment and unsightly seams. Let's start with the good things, the size and the kick plane. Like the Ox, its oversized platform is large enough for riders of all shapes and sizes to find a stance that feels comfortable. For context, it measures 20 inches in length and 8.5 inches in width, not including the kick plate. It shares these dimensions with the Ox and by comparison to the scooters that I recommend as alternatives, it goes toe to toe with the VSET 10 Plus, while the Wolf Warrior adds an extra half inch to the width. If you've seen rental scooters or similar commuter style scooters, these tend to have decks that measure around 18 inches in length and six inches in width. So this should give you some perspective of how big the OXO's deck really is. As for the kick plate, it's got a tapered design that extends the deck by a further four inches. While the additional space allows for even more room to find a stance that is most suited to your riding style, it plays a pivotal role in handling. Placing your back foot on the angled plate allows for a more aggressive riding posture and although the OXO doesn't exactly burn rubber off the start line, its 40 miles per hour top speed and ability to tackle off-road terrain make the kick plate a welcome addition to keep you stable. Also, because of its size, it's easy to shift your weight to the rear of the scooter when braking. This applies more weight over the rear wheel, which increases the contact patch with the ground below and ultimately improves braking performance as a result of more traction. Where the deck is lacking though is in its materials. Considering the OXO's high price and Inokim's stellar reputation, you'd expect to find the deck to be covered in a grippy rubber or tape, but this isn't the case. Instead, it's a hard, scratchy plastic. The design of it looks gray, almost like a stone alleyway in Greece, but it's a simple case of style over substance. If you wear trainers with rubber soles, you can keep your feet somewhat gripped to the deck, but as soon as the terrain becomes bumpy and kind of rough, then it's easy to lose your footing. The only plus point is how easy it is to clean, but I would choose grip over this every day of the week. Measuring 10 inches tall and 2.5 inches wide, the OXO has two air-filled tires. Surprisingly, these are fairly narrow for the size of the frame, and while this seemed like a disadvantage at first, it actually proved to be beneficial. Thanks to their slender profile, the OXO steering remained nimble. One thing worth noting though is that the narrow profile of the tires is smaller than similarly priced competitors, with the majority sporting 10 by 3 inch tires. Being narrower, they are more primed for street riding than off-roading, though I tested the OXO on light off-road tracks and it performed very well. However, if you're going to be using it on more challenging off-road tracks, you might want to consider fitting the off-road tyres. As you'd expect from a premium scooter, the tyres play a pivotal role in ride quality and in the case of the OXO, they deliver that much coveted smooth sailing sensation on all types of terrain. Even in the wet, the tyres offer good traction, although the deck doesn't. The OXO's build quality is second to none. 
Unlike some of the other scooters that we've reviewed that look like they've been pulled together like Frankenstein, the Oxo has been crafted carefully and the attention to detail is clear to see. The screws and bolts sit flush to the frame and the cables are tucked away and the smooth edges make each component flow into the next. Overall, the Oxo, like the rest of the Inokim range, is one of the best built electric scooters. So how do they do it? Well, it's all down to the manufacturing process. Each part is forged from a single piece of aluminium alloy using a precise pre-programmed computer software, otherwise known as CNC manufacturing. There are three benefits to this. The first one is that there's no welding, meaning that there are no weak points. The second one is that each piece is flawless in its design, which aids to the sleek aesthetic. And then the third one, there we go, third one is that it has a consistent product quality control process. What's more, the Inokim is vertically integrated and in layman's terms, this essentially means that Inokim owns all of the components used in their scooters, meaning that they fit together seamlessly, as opposed to other brands which kind of pick up components from different manufacturers and then join them together. There is one area that needs improvement though. None of Inokim scooters come with water resistance ratings. This is acceptable on scooters lower down the price scale, but for the price tag of the OXO, I feel like it's a little bit of a letdown. For instance, both the VSET 10 Plus models and the Wolf Warrior that I've recommended as alternatives have official IP ratings. The OXO weighs in at a whopping 74 pounds, so it is pretty heavy. Compared to the scooters that I recommend as alternatives, it's on the lighter side with the VSET 10 Plus models weighing in at 79 pounds and the Wolf Warrior coming in at a scale busting 101 pounds. In comparison to its younger brother, the OX is a full 13 pounds heavier, but it does have those dual motors and a bigger battery. So what about low capacity? Well, it can support up to 200 and 65 pounds of rider weight and this has become the standard for scooters of its ilk but it does fall short against some of its competition. It's important to note that I always recommend opting for a scooter that has a low capacity that is at least 20 to 40 pounds above your weight. If the OXO won't be a good fit for you then I suggest taking a look at my guide to the best electric scooters for heavy riders. As far as folding mechanisms go, the one on the OXO is faultless. It's strong, durable, and wobble free. It uses a red lever to control a claw-like mechanism that secures the stem in place and a rubber collar that wraps around the stem to lock the lever into place. You can also use the red dial on the opposite side of the stem to tighten or loosen the mechanism. Another useful feature is the cutout on the kick plate and this acts as a latch where the ridge on the back of the handlebars actually slots into. Now once the ridge is hooked into that slot you can lift the OXO up by its stem. Now while the folding mechanism is simple in its approach it delivers where it needs to. Other performance scooters often rely on collar clamps which are notorious for not being tight and causing the stem to wobble back and forth but this isn't an issue with the OXO. If I was to describe the OXO's ride quality in one word, it would be luxurious. The OXO is the Rolls Royce of the scooter world in terms of build and ride quality. The exceptional ride is largely down to the OXO's unique suspension setup, which features both rubber suspension and those single-sided swing arms. The two combined do a fantastic job of soaking up bumps and undulations. In my review of the Inokim Ox, so the Inokim Oxo's predecessor, I rated it a 7.5 on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 was extremely stiff and 10 was super soft. And the same can be said for the Oxo. It is hands down one of the best scooters that I have ridden. I put this down to the fact that it relies on rubber rather than springs and rubber is a lot more, well, squishy. 
Combined with the solid stem, super wide handlebars and extremely powerful brakes, the Oxo gives you the confidence while riding. However, as with all scooters, there are some hangups. Most notably, it is the non-grippy deck, which detracts from the confidence acquired from the other components. I have seen some riders fix this though by sticking a layer of grip tape over the plastic. The OXO has a top speed of 40 miles per hour, but how does that compare to similar scooters? Well, let's have a look at how the OXO compares to scooters in its price and weight class. The OXO's price class isn't a busy one. When we take a $500 price range with the OXO's $2,599 price tag in the middle, there are just five comparable models to choose from. So how does it perform? As you can see from the chart, not very well. It was narrowly beaten by the Wolf Warrior X Pro finishing last. Now the OXO's top speed is by no means slow, but there is a significant gap between it and the top models in its price bracket. Specifically, there's 10 miles per hour separating the OXO and the leaders of the pack, which are the VSET 10 Plus and the 10 Plus 25.6 amp version, both of which have top speeds of 50 miles per hour. These results don't come as a surprise though, because while that OXO is powered by dual 1000 watt motors, the VSET models get their rubber burning abilities from dual 1400 watt motors. Similarly, the Evolve Pro R sports dual 1200 watt motors and the Wolf Warrior X Pro has 1100 watt motors. As a rule of thumb, the higher the wattage, the higher the top speed. However, what may come as a surprise is the fact that the VSET 10 Plus 25.6 amp version actually cost $209 less than the OXO, making it the scooter offering the best value. Plus, it's not only the higher top speed that you'll appreciate, but also the rapid acceleration that comes with it. But more on this in the acceleration section of the review next. For those of you watching in the UK, I've also done a comparison of all of the models that are available in the UK and that fall in a 500 pound bracket around the OXO's £2,199 price tag. Here, the fastest scooter is once again, the duo of the VSET 10 Plus models. The OXO moves up the rankings when compared to 11 other scooters that sit within five pounds on either side of its 74 pound bulk. Here, the OXO shares its top speed with four other scooters, securing a middle of the pack ranking. Like the speed versus price comparison, the ferocious VSET 10 Plus R yet again takes the top spot along with the entire lineup of the 10 Plus models with 50 miles per hour. All of these models have the same setup aside from the different battery sizes, which affects the mileage. The AH figure depicts the battery size. The smaller the battery, the lower the price tag. Below the VSET set scooters is the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus's smaller yet insanely powerful sibling, the Wolf Warrior X Pro. This scooter takes everything good about the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus and improves it to deliver a less bulky package that delivers serious top speeds, acceleration and ride quality that made the former so popular. And for those of you that are watching in the UK, I've also done a comparison here of all the models that fall within a 5K weight bracket around the OXO's 33.6 kilogram weight. And here the fastest scooter is also the VSET 10 Plus. Now, acceleration is where the OXO struggles, but it's nothing new to Inicum as all performance models, including the OX Hero and OX Super also struggle in this department. As you can see, it's slow off the mark, or is it just that the VSET models are super fast? Whichever way you look at it, it doesn't look good for the OXO. Even when we compare it to scooters like say, the Apollo Ghost, which has dual 800 watt motors, the OXO's acceleration rate is still 52% lower to 15 miles per hour and 25% slower to 25 miles per hour. And it's also worth pointing out that the Apollo Ghost is $1,000 cheaper than the OXO. Taking a close look at the scooters that I've recommended as alternatives, the OXO is no match for either of the VSET 10 Plus models or the Wolf Warrior. 
Digging into the performance data, the VSET 10 Plus has, on average, a 48% faster acceleration rate, and the Wolf Warrior follows closely behind with an acceleration rate that is 45% faster. If you want the power of the VSET 10 Plus R, but you don't need its 74 mile range and want to save a little money, the VSET 10 Plus 25.6 amp version with its 66 mile range and $2,390 price tag is a great choice. The large 60 volt 25.6 amp LG battery delivers a supremely long range ride, clocking in a maximum mileage of 68 miles. Combined with its excellent ride quality, we rate it as one of the best long range electric scooters. But how does this stack up against its competition? Let's find out. Unlike the speed versus price comparison, the OXO moves up the rankings, securing second place where it's pipped to the post again by the VSET 10 Plus R and its 74 mile range. While it's not a win for the OXO, it's only six miles behind the VSET 10 Plus R, and when we factor in realistic conditions, the two deliver very similar ranges which average around a 37 mile mark. Ultimately then, it comes down to which provides the best overall package. Given that the OXO's biggest benefits alongside mileage are its build and ride quality, the 10 Plus R needs to live up to these, so does it? Well, it's a resounding yes. The 10 Plus R is an excellent scooter. Reminiscent of Bumblebee from the Transformers, it not only stands out from the crowd with its flamboyant, stylish, robotic, and geometric frame, but it negotiates a delicate balance between power and price to deliver a highly versatile and nimble scooter that will leave you with a smile stretching from ear to ear. Plus, it makes up for where the OXO let us down. It has a grippy, rubber-covered deck and blisteringly fast acceleration rate. So those are the results for our comparison of the scooters that are available in the US. And when we look at the pool of electric scooters in the UK, the results are very similar with the Inokim OXO following the VSET 10 Plus R in the rankings. Weight can often be a key factor in the decision-making process when it comes to choosing which scooter is right for you. And with that comes further considerations like which model packs the most power. Taking a 10 pound weight bracket with the OXO's 74 pounds in the middle reveals the scooters best suited for long range rides. Out of the comparable 12 models, including the OXO, it confidently takes third place with a range that is greater than 75% of all other scooters in the list. In first and second, there's the Speedway 5 with 75 miles, and again, the VSET 10 Plus R with 74 miles. Now, while the Speedway 5 may seem like the best option on paper, it doesn't paint the full picture. The Speedway's biggest flaws are its telescopic stem and foldable handlebars, and most of all, it's cheap Chinese battery cells. While telescopic stems are effective on lighter commute scooters where they enhance portability, they are a weird design choice to have on a performance model, hence you don't see them on any other models. When you're riding at speed, the stem of your scooter is put under significant amounts of pressure, especially when you pull back on the handlebars as a result of jolts in the road or jumps off road. Telescopic stems simply don't have the level of reinforcement needed to deliver a reliable ride at high speeds. As for the foldable handlebars, there's an exception to this, and that's if they screw securely into place like those on the VSET 10 Plus models. Unfortunately, the Speedway 5 just uses tension cuffs, which means that the grips are only held into place by slotting them over the T-bar in the middle of the handlebars. The last thing you want on a long range ride is wobbly, unstable handlebars. Finally, Chinese batteries are chosen by manufacturers to bring the cost of a scooter down, but they deteriorate quicker than high performance batteries like those from LG. Just as your phone battery decays the more you charge it, cheaper Chinese cells used in scooter batteries do the same. In brief, this means that higher quality batteries hold their peak performance for longer across many more charge cycles. With all of this in mind, the VSET 10 Plus R with its large LG battery is the true winner. 
The results shown in this comparison are yet again the same for all of the scooters that are available in the UK, where the V6 10 Plus R reigns supreme. The Oxo's hill climbing capabilities are pretty good so long as you build momentum. Thanks to their dual motors, they generate enough torque to scale challenging urban inclines up to 25 degrees. However, if you start the scooter on a hill, it does take a while for it to pick up pace because of its sluggish acceleration rate. The Oxo's suspension is one of its many redeeming factors. Like the Ox, it sports the same rubber cartridge suspension system and single-sided swing arms that are adjustable to either a high or low setting. Despite having two settings to choose from, the Oxo comes stock with the low setting and this hugs the road, making it capable of delivering a buttery smooth ride while gliding city streets and tearing up dirt tracks. The high setting is best suited for rough off-road terrain where you need more clearance and room for the swing arms to pivot, allowing for a deeper suspension. Adjusting the suspension isn't a quick job, but all the tools you need to do it are included in the box. A word of warning though, don't use two different settings. For example, don't set the front swing arm to low or the rear to high and vice versa. Alongside its ability to soak up vibrations like a hot knife cutting through butter, the damping, so the process of controlling the spring's oscillation when it compresses and rebounds, keeps the wheels in contact with the ground at all times. This is different from scooters that rely on springs since these have the tendency to bounce the scooter up and down, meaning that you lose traction. I've tested many scooters and done many brake tests and the Oxo is up there with the best. Equipped with Zoom hydraulic brakes, it can come to a stop in just 2.7 meters from 15 miles per hour. I consider this to be excellent and to give you more context as to why the average performance scooter takes around three to 3.4 meters to stop. Zoom hydraulic brakes are some of the best that you can get and with the light feathering of the grippy brake levers they kick into action. Unlike some scooters such as the Wolf Warrior or Mantis Pro that have dedicated anti-locking braking systems it's important to remember that pulling hard on the levers can cause the wheels to lock up and skid so it's important to bear this in mind if you're going to be making the transition to the OXO from a scooter that has an ABS system. It takes 13.5 hours to charge the 60 volt 25.6 amp battery. The display is clean and minimalistic. Its primary role is to provide insights into basic riding stats, while you can also dig deeper into the scooter settings to control the screen's brightness, maximum speed, cruise control function, whether it's on or off, for example, the units of display, so whether that's kilometers or miles, and the photo cell settings, which I'll discuss in more detail next. Now, to go alongside the display, one feature that can make a big difference to your riding experience is the type of throttle, and those of the thumb variety are the best. You'll often see scooters with either a QS S4 display or an I Mini Motors display that have a trigger throttle that you pull with your finger. Over the past few years, these became the go-to design, but with the evolution of the electric scooter industry, newer models are opting for thumb throttles as a result of their more ergonomic shape and placement. Inokin was one of the first scooter brands to incorporate these into their scooters and it's paid off. It's the cherry on top of the ride quality cake. You won't get hand cramps as is the case with finger throttles, but instead enjoy long rides with these. The Oxo has low mounted lights that turn on automatically when it's dark out. There are two lights at the front, one on either side of the deck, and then there's also one at the rear. The front lights do an average job of letting pedestrians know that you're there, but they aren't bright enough to light the road ahead. 
Another slight annoyance is the positioning of the rear brake light. Because it's only on the right side of the deck, not everyone can see it flashing when the brakes are engaged and so it's not the best in terms of safety. Here I recommend adding extra lights to the front and rear of the scooter. Now, while the lights aren't the greatest, a cool feature is that they turn on automatically. It uses photocell sensors in the throttle to detect the light level, and you can either enable or disable this or adjust the light level at which you want the lights to turn on. As far as tire huggers go, the one on the OXO is one of the best we've seen. It covers a large surface area of the tire and does a great job of protecting you against water and mud splatter. What's more, because of the large kick plate, you get even more protection when it's wet. That's the review of the Inner Kim OXO. If you liked what you saw, you can either pick it up by scanning this QR code here or clicking the links in the description. As always, I'll make sure to provide links for all of the scooters that I've recommended as alternatives. And if you need any more information, why not head over to electricscooterinsider.com where we have a bunch of reviews and guides. If you found value from this review, do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe to become an Electric Scooter Insider, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.